What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, we're going over the final Demonic Beast Battle, guys, with Demonic Beast Battle, Nidhogg, and going over how you guys can actually clear the fight, going over the best teams, best gear sets, best card sets, and how you want to go about it, guys, so let's hop in, and let's discuss. Before we actually hop into the video, make sure to subscribe to your boy Amazing, we are on the road to the 50,000 subscribers, guys, we just hit 40k, but that doesn't mean you guys uh, can't stop supporting the channel, man, definitely make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And without the way, man, let's hop in, guys, and let's go over the Nidhogg Demonic Beast battle. And first, we'll talk about the best teams and meta teams you want to be running on the fight. All right, guys, so this is the updated Nidhogg Floor 3 meta teams guide here that I actually have for you guys. So in terms of the teams that we can actually use here, we have the Goddess Mael team, we have the Goddess Tarmiel team, the Sins LR Elizabeth team, the Ragnarok Tier team, the Ragnarok Matrona team, and the Ragnarok Scotty team. Now, for the video here, guys, we are going to be using the Goddess Mael team, as I think this is the best team that you guys can use. Use, and it has pretty much everything for you know the Freya relic and it has LR Elizabeth and then Summer Margaret so it's literally the best team uh, in my opinion for actually clearing Nidhogg and the one that I recommend all of you guys definitely want to build so now that we've kind of mentioned all the teams here let's go to the notes and let's talk about what we have to mention here for the notes so all characters that have holy relics are being used for this guide and the only mandatory relics are for Freya and Freya as they provide these stat increases for the respective teams so if you are going to be running a team like this for uh for Nidhogg and you don't actually have Freya Relic, you would have to sub uh, substitute out Freya for another character, um, and you could just put in, like, you know, Red Tarmiel, right? That's going to be fine. You pretty much want to uh, substitute a character for um, someone else that would give, you know, a certain amount of stats to that teammate, and uh, if you don't have Freya Relic, you would have to run, uh, you know, Tarmiel, and you couldn't run regular Freya, because regular Freya needs the Relic to be able to have the, uh, the bonus, right? Um, so that's how I mentioned the uh, Holy Relics right there. The Holy Relic icon and the Red Tarmiel link you guys can see so these are all the characters that need it and all of that um, for the other thing that we have to mention here green freya can act as a substitute for any freya team using goddess characters the red freya is still the best variant of the two as she has a uh, one aoe and one single target skill for phase or uh, for floor three phase two on um, floor three phase two of nidhogg when i get to it i will actually explain it for you guys but pretty much man it's going to be something that where you want to have st uh, stance cancel and uh, because the holy relic for freya makes it so that you have stance cancel on single target skills um it's going to be kind of bad if you have too many stance cancel because um there's a little bit of a few gimmicks you know that are related to that so we'll definitely talk about that when we get to it guys but these are pretty much the meta teams and the main one that i recommend is going to be guys my l if you don't have freya then you can substitute tarmiel in and you would just have to swap uh you know freya for like my l right um you guys can see that there's a uh, uh, other teams as well like you know since lr elizabeth team is still really good you know this is one of the original teams that beat it but um this elizabeth wasn't lr at the time by the way um that was a long time ago and then uh, ragnarok uh, scotty team is pretty good too you have healing with Miguelda, and you have just a ton of you know basic stats and all that um the ragnarok patrona team is pretty good too you have another buff removal character and then the ragnarok tier team where tier is actually able to do a good chunk of damage and uh, help out the rest of the team as well so uh yeah man that's pretty much the setup right there guys for nidhogg floor three let's actually move over to the special gear sets and we'll be going over what you guys want to be running for the gear all right guys so for special gear here on nidhogg floor three the special gear hasn't changed from the last time i've done the video covering the gear that you want to be running but as you guys can see here we have the tarmiel gear that you want to be making and then also freya gear for her and her holy relic so for the notes here guys it says tarmiel gear is used on the character that runs tarmiel link for example if you're running red Megilda on the ragnarok team she should have the same set as tarmiel does in this graphic so pretty much what you guys are going to have is you're going to have this type of gear set on the character that has the tarmiel link or if you're running tarmiel on field then this would be the gear set that you want to run um and then uh, for freya here guys freya's gear should always have resistance middle piece for only the earring so that she has better survivability from taking damage you guys can see here i only have the earring for freya that has resistance whereas the other piece is going to be your standard you know uh defense rolls right and everything else is going to be standard rolls as well and then for the uh, last thing here that we have to mention is that all other gear that isn't mentioned here is the standard sets for the respective character and the standard substat rolls for example margaret would be hp defense rolls with basic stat rolls because of the way she is where you know her best set is hp defense if we actually do go into the game as well guys if you don't know um you can actually check a character's best gear set by going on to their uh you go onto their little like section here and you click this little button and it'll actually recommend you the best gear set for that character when running them in the content and so right here as an example guys it shows you that red margaret right here her best gear set is going to be hp defense and that's going to be the standard set that you would run and it's not bad to actually 
you know listen to uh what net marble recommends themselves uh or whatever i suggest for like my videos if i ever make a video on like the best gear set for a character you would definitely want to watch that video as well uh but yeah man and it also has the team here as you guys can see for nidhogg uh, floor one two three this is the team we're actually going to be using on the video so that's very cool so they obviously know uh the best strategy as well all right guys so with that out of the way man and that pretty much covers these special gear sets let's move on to the card sets guys and cover what we want to be discussing for the card sets all right guys so for the best artifact card sets on nidhogg this is the graphic that i actually made here for the card sets and what you want to be running so we have the notes here so we have the itunus refuge is used when running any team with mixed race characters the card set is a universal demonic beast battle 10 percent basic stat increase and for the example team that we actually use here guys we rock the uh, scotty freyer freya and red Megelda team and the reason why this team works is because it's a full ragnarok team but it's not the full same race team because we do have scotty here being a giant character so because of that it actually does not have a full uh, same race so that's why we are running itunus refuge for this team now for the other team here that we have on the right it's going to be for the twilight temple set where twilight temple is used when running any team with mono race characters the card set gives 15 percent attack related stats only if your team consists of characters with the same race so you have you know the full goddess team right here freya after getting her relic counts as a goddess character as well so she actually does benefit from the passes and these are both the passes for the card sets right here guys and those are the best card sets in my opinion on uh when running nidhogg uh demonic beast battle all right guys so now that we've gone over all of that let's hop in and talk about the passes of the floors and why they necessarily do not matter too much on nidhogg for you guys that don't know passes on nidhogg do not carry over for every phase they actually only stay for that last phase that they're going to be on so depending on the passive that you get i will rank the passes in order from best to worst but they don't necessarily matter because once you get to that point in the fight as long as you're able to clear it the pass is not going to carry over to the next stage of the fight so that's one thing i wanted to clarify right there but for the passes here guys we do have the first one right here debuff resonance increase the hero's attack by four percent for every debuff applied on the enemies this is not too bad um defense related stat increase increases defense related stats by 20 percent when surviving an ultimate move this one can be a little bit annoying um and then we have this one right here which decreases all enemies crew resistance and critical defense by 20 percent so definitely the best one's going to be debuff resonance and then the uh, the second best one will probably be the defense related increase and then the worst one would be the crit resistance and crit defense uh decrease passive so yeah that's gonna be floor one right there moving on to floor two guys we have the uh first passive which is just gonna increase the hero's hp by 15 percent um we do also have the hero in, uh, ignores 40 percent of the enemy's defense when using skills and then we also have decreases the damage this hero takes from uh by enemies by 20 percent so probably the best one would be the ignoring the defense one where they deal more damage to us because that necessarily doesn't matter too much especially with how strong the the teams are on nidhogg right now um the increasing hp is not too bad either if you can already hit a like damage cap on on this phase then you won't necessarily have too many issues and then the damage decrease one is also you know not the worst thing in the world i don't think any of these passes are too bad um regardless of the one you get i think you'll do fairly well on this phase so let's hop into floor three now guys for the passes for floor three the best passes easily going to be desperate resolve the rest of the passives here uh you know they're going to be increasing the hero's attack at the end of the allies turn by three percent the other one's going to increase the hero's critical damage by five percent per hero skill use so definitely the best one's going to be the one that gives them one extra ultimate move gauge because at the end of the day one ultimate move gauge is really not going to be doing too much for the actual boss and so i don't think it really does uh you know matter in the grand scheme of things all right guys so that pretty much covers the passes right there man let's hop into the team we're going to be using here and go over what we're going to be running so for the team guys we are running the mayel goddess team the standard one and as you guys can see we are running the special gear set for elizabeth just like we mentioned earlier so we are running the triple defense gear and we are going to be running the recovery rate because we are running tarmiel link on elizabeth um so i know a few people actually do like to run tarmiel link on freya but in my opinion it's better to have it on elizabeth because freya you definitely want her to be a damage dealer you want her to have sario link for damage right and uh, as long as you make sure her hp is a lot higher than the elizabeth you'll never have issues where freya is getting targeted over elizabeth and then uh, for the rest of the team we got mayel we do also have summer margaret and then for the card set guys we are running the same race card set because the entire team here is going to be of goddess allies all right guys so let's hop in and let's actually showcase what this team's capable of doing and i'm going to explain every single phase of nidhogg while going through the fight all right guys so we are hopping into floor one of nidhogg here let's explain exactly what you guys want to be know what you want to know about every single phase of the fight and i'm going to be explaining everything you need to know going through it guys so starting with the first phase here of floor one um let's actually check to see the skills of the boss and we'll actually talk about what he's able to do so for the skills here that the boss is gonna have 
he's gonna have if you click on him right here he's gonna have a weak point single target right so make sure uh you watch out for debuffs right weak point single target he does also have an aoe that removes buffs and stances and then it uh, applies poison and bleed with a 240 percent of attack on the rank 2 150 percent on the rank 1 so that's gonna be very important man so if he's doing the aoe and then follow up double single target which is usually what he's gonna do you definitely want the character that you're having with the tarmio link to be the one that gets targeted and because elizabeth does have recovery rate gear on she actually will have fairly good recovery rate when actually going into this part of the fight so what you want to do on this phase of the fight guys is you want to start building up all stats let's talk about the characters we're using here freya here after having her relic um the hero single target attacks have stance cancel effect in a nidhogg my beast battle she increases all stats of allies by four percent every time the hero inflicts damage using skills up to five times so whenever freya does a skill that does damage it's actually going to increase the all stats of the team by four percent right that's going to be very very important the hero is given the additional race of goddess so that's why she gets uh, the benefit from the goddess and if all allies are in the battle are of goddesses each goddess ally increases the hero's attack related stats by 10 percent and that's why freya has such uh you know high attack related stats uh for herself Right, so that's going to be Freya right there. And then LR Liz is the other character that's going to be very, very important. If we actually look at LR Liz's passive in PvE battles, allies' basic stats increase by 6%, up to 30% whenever the hero heals an ally. The hero's ultimate move gauge fills up by one orb whenever the hero uses a skill. And if the hero uses an attack skill, buffs are removed from the enemy before the skill activates. It's going to be very important for Nidog because there is a phase where you need a buff removal character. And because Elizabeth has that in her passive, she actually is able to remove buffs a little bit later in the fight. And we'll talk about when we get to that. And then for the last part of her passive, in all game modes, allies recovery rate increased by 20% whenever the hero heals an ally, limit of 5 times. So that's going to be very, very good. And then for Margaret here, she's going to be another buffer on the team where it increases goddess allies basic stats by 10% for each one participating in the Nidhogg Demonic Beast battle, increases goddess allies damage dealt by 15%, up to 45% every time the hero uses a buff skill. And in addition, if the hero skill uses a debuff, uh, removes a debuff from an ally, they are healed by 20% of their max HP. So you have two ways on this team of actually having heals. You have LR Elizabeth, and you also do have L uh, Summer Margaret. And then Freya here is going to be a basic stat build-up character, so you want to pretty much always be attacking with her from the jump. So what I actually recommend to do, guys, with a team setup like this, is actually going to be attacking with Freya and doing the double uh, attack with her. I actually will stall a turn here to show you guys what happens when, when we take damage from the boss here. So I actually am going to buff up here with uh, Elizabeth. But if you have a team like this where you're running Red Margaret, you could easily one-phase this fight just by using the attacking skills and summer margaret because you already have all your basic stats built up versus the blue margaret where you don't um you're going to be able to deal a lot of damage on the turn one so that's pretty much that guys i will just uh, let this turn rock regardless um just so you guys can see how much damage we actually do take but you want to build up uh you know all stats with freya right there and as you guys can see she does a lot of damage right there man so uh there we go we get the defense related buff up and then we're going to go for the uh, AoE card with Elizabeth. And you guys will be able to see exactly what happens now when we're getting targeted. So right there, they're going to remove the buffs that we just buffed up with. And then they're going to go for the single target weak point, which is why you want to have the character with Tarmia Link be the lowest HP with the triple defense so that they get targeted for this weak point attack at the very beginning of the fight and so that they barely take any damage. You guys can see we completely tanked that very, very well right there. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to buff up with Margaret because remember, whenever she cleanses debuffs, she actually does heal Alex by 20% of their max HP. So she's going to act kind of like Red Megilda, right? So we're going to uh, actually do the cleanse right there and then actually do this right here and then just follow up with whatever other cards we got. So we're just going to waste the rest of our cards right there because while we're doing this, we're actually going to finish off this part of the fight and move into the next phase. So there we go, guys. We get the buff up, go for the AoE, boom. And then uh, follow up AoE from Mael here and he's actually going to finish off this phase of the fight and we can move on to the second phase. Alright guys, so hopping into phase 2 of the uh, Nidhogg Floor 1. The phase 2, the way it works guys, as you guys can see, he has 3 damage reduction stacks. Now these damage reduction stacks can only be removed when using a stance cancel effect. Final damage is reduced by 20%. So that means that the damage cap is actually lowered pretty much. So that means you do a lot, a lot less damage when there are uh, these uh, final damage decreases. For the skills that the, the Sorcerer Corruption has or the Nidhogg Floor 2, he's going to have a stance effect that he's going to have, which is going to be able to counter by 500% of his attack. 
attack. He's going to have a block effect AoE, which is going to be this uh, Hail of Thorns card. He's going to do this every uh, even number turn. So every, you know, two, four, six, eight turn, he's going to be using this skill right here. I think it's starting, it might it either be starting from the third turn or it's the second turn uh, instantly. So yeah, and then he does have Pierce card that decreases max HP for two turns. And then he does also have extort on uh, one enemy as well. So uh, that's going to be very important to know. So what we're going to do here, guys, is we're always going to be using the Elizabeth ultimates whenever we get it. Elizabeth's ultimate also increases attack related stats depending on the dupe level. So that's like, always going to help when dealing damage. Um, whenever you remove stances on this uh, on this boss or remove the damage reduction, you're obviously going to be dealing more damage. And so characters like, you know, Summer Margaret or even like, you know, Freya here where they have cancel stance on their cards built in, you're going to be able to remove these stances really quickly and start to deal a ton of damage. So what we're actually going to do here is we're just going to drop the ultimate with uh, Elizabeth right there, make sure we're full HP. And then we're just going to rip all our cancel stance cards so that we can, you know, deal a lot more damage with our attacking cards. So there we go, guys. As you can see, boom, we remove another uh, damage reduction. Remove another damage reduction, and now he has no damage reduction effects now, and we can easily actually kill him now. Um, the stance that he would do would be on the next turn, but since we've already been able to remove all these stances, guys, um, we're just instantly gonna kill him here, right? Um, and as you guys can see, look how much we're healing now back from our from our Tarmiel link. Look at that, it's pretty much full HP, and the reason why is because Elizabeth builds up allies recovery rate whenever she heals an ally, remember. So you can build up that recovery rate very quickly, and look, we're already at 250% recovery rate right there. So we're actually doing very well. And so right here, because we are extorted on Elizabeth right there, I am going to do the cleanse right there on Margaret to make sure that we full heal and actually remove that. And then what we're going to do here as well, guys, is we're just going to drop the double single target with Mael to finish off this phase of the fight. And we can actually move on to the final phase. So if you had to stay a little bit longer in this phase, guys, because you don't have too many cancel stands, then it's fine. You can definitely stall on this phase because um, there's no real other gimmick than the fact that you get block affected every even turn. And then other than that, you're not going to have too many issues. It's really just about canceling the stance and then going through the phase like that so that's going to be the floor two phase two or floor one phase two now moving into phase three of floor one here guys this is where it starts to get a little bit important so you guys can see now on the left side of the screen we actually do have a gauge bar now the way this gauge works is, uh, is it mentions here remove immortality fully deplete the gauge to remove the demonic pieces immortality effect the increase effect is going to be no effects applied and the decrease is going to be if by using um what is that pierce cards to actually shred the gauge or by dealing damage uh with any cards pretty much right so you either deal damage with any cards or you have a pierce card effect to actually decrease it a lot faster now for the increase effect this would be how he increases his gauge which he has no way of increasing his gauge on phase three of floor one right other phases of the fight will have him increase it but on this phase he's not going to be able to do it all right guys so now looking at his skills here let's see what this nidhogg uh is able to do right so he has ignite on his ultimate right which is going to be uh not too important really you're not really going to be seeing this too often he does have ruin aoe which is going to remove all the debuffs and deal 20 percent per debuff that was removed he does also have poison aoe and then he has bleed aoe as well so uh or a uh, single target right so nothing too crazy these skills are not anything to worry about um you guys can see as well that the boss actually does does have a uh what is that a damage taken decrease by 10 percent um and this is not going to be able to be removed until he gets to around i think the 30 percent hp range um if i'm not mistaken it's either that or when the gauge is depleted to zero he loses it that way all right guys and so the way you want to be depleting his gauges by using skills to do damage obviously but the boss the way he works depending on the ranks of skills you use so let's say i was to use a rank 2 skill versus a rank 1 we're actually going to shred the gauge in a different amount of percent i think rank 2 on floor 1 is actually going to be 45 percent if i'm not mistaken and then rank 1 is only going to be about 20 uh 20 25 percent it's nothing too crazy right for you guys that don't know as well when the boss gets to less than 30 percent hp he actually will get two attack related stat increase effects which are going to be really really bad for you because he's going to pretty much one shot your whole team when he gets those so you want to not like instantly one bang him on turn one and you kind of want to save your damage so what on floor or uh, on turn two you actually do go for the kill so what i'm gonna do here and it's gonna be a safe play that you want to do is i'll drop my my ultimate because we know it's only going to be a damage cap of around 35 percent i think um so we're gonna do the ultimate with my right there and i'm actually gonna merge elizabeth and do her rank two and that's it i'm ending my turn right there we're just gonna make sure we do this so we don't do too much damage right there guys so there we go we do the ultimate right there we do the aoe with elizabeth and just like that we're gonna shred the gauge by a good chunk of damage i think uh that was what uh 40 from the ultimate and then 45 percent from the uh from the rank 2 skill that we actually just did right so that's very important right there 
all right so right here we're not taking too much damage we have a lot of damage reduction because we just dropped my all ultimate and we have a lot of dupes on him you don't need dupes on my all by the way for this to to work like you obviously get a lot of damage reduction but you don't need it that's the main thing um so right here what we're actually gonna do guys is we're gonna do the elizabeth heal now because we're gonna finish the fight on this turn so we're actually gonna rip the ultimate with freya here rip the ultimate with margaret and then just attack again because with these ultimates we're actually gonna put him to zero on the gauge and then because he's gonna be zero on the gauge he's gonna be a lot easier to kill so right here you guys can see he does get the attack related stats but he dies uh because we are following up with a ton of damage and because the gauge was zero we actually could take him out so that is floor one right there guys in terms of everything you want to know pretty much um just bear in mind that you don't want to kill him on uh turn one instantly you want to make sure that you're full hp going into the next phase so you want to stall the turn get a kill with elizabeth while making sure that you shred the gauge to zero and then killing him that way that's going to be the way you actually want to go about it so that's floor one let's hop into floor two all right guys so hopping into floor two of nidhogg here let's go over the mechanics on floor two so that you guys know exactly what to do when clearing the fight so we're loading in here guys we are on going to be the exact same phase as the as the floor one but you guys can see a little bit things have changed here you guys can see now that he has a blue immortality buff he does also have this little like gray buff right here let's actually click on him and see what these are what these are actually called so he has damage recovery which immediately re recovers two percent of max hp when dealing damage with spores he has immortality blue buff which hp does not fall below one with a blue buff right there and then he does also have the spore debuff which uh additional damage equal to one percent of max hp at the end of every turn so yeah that pretty much covers the effects right there in terms of his skills he's gonna have co-destruction on his ultimate he's gonna have a stance effect which uh if the enemy has three or more corrosion effects the effect will be removed and stun will be applied to the enemy right so you definitely don't want to attack into him when he has this stance unless you have less than uh three corrosions he does also have the buff card here guys where it applies an effect which restores 20 percent of damage taken when attacked and inflicts spore damage equal to one percent of max hp on self which is going to be additional damage at the uh, end of every turn and can be stacked up um for his actual aoe here he does have corrosion uh, aoe and it's going to be a uh, 10 percent uh, shred which does 200 percent of attack as well and then he has weak point aoe as well so this phase is where he's going to auto apply a debuff as well start a turn and you guys are going to be getting hit by the weak point which is going to do a lot of damage so this is why we needed a buff removal with elizabeth on this phase because you cannot actually remove that immortality unless you have a buff removal uh, effect on your character Character. so either green elizabeth or red elizabeth both of them do it right you want to make sure you have some type of buff removal so that you're able to remove this buff on floor two if you want to go past floor one right so what we're going to do on this first turn guys same thing that we did last time we want to build up all stats with freya here and because of that we are going to be using as many freya skills as we can i'm also going to waste uh you know miles cards as well because mile can actually apply sunspot on this first phase to get us some damage reduction so i'm going to do the aoe follow up single target and uh, as you guys can see he does have a damage cap of about 30 percent as well um so we're gonna do the aoe and then we're gonna do the single target right there and as you guys can see because he has immortality we're not gonna be able to kill him so now that he is very low on hp guys this is gonna be the chance where you want actually want to go for the flood right this is where you want to go for the buff removal card from elizabeth so he's going to go for the uh, debuff right there, follow up with the AoE, and uh, these debuffs are obviously going to do a lot when he's doing the weak point attack. When he does the one that, like, you know, attacks left and right, that's the weak point skill, and that one does a lot of damage, right? Um, so we can see here that his HP, if we actually go to his remaining HP here, guys, let me actually check it. Uh, he actually only has 66k HP, so we are in a pretty good spot to actually kill and move on to the next phase. Now, what we want to make sure we do is follow up attack after we do the buff removal, because the moment we buff strip that immortality, he's going to get a bunch of damage reduction uh you know stacks and uh, final damage decrease stacks and so that's going to be harder for you to actually kill him so you have to make sure that he is around around like 10 percent hp 20 percent hp maybe right and then you can actually go for the kill so what we're going to do here is we're going to do the margaret buff card right there just to make sure we get full hp i'm actually going to do the freya attack card as well to lifesteal a little bit with her and then i'm going to do the buff removal skill right here with elizabeth and then follow up with my all single target to finish off the fight as we move into the next phase so right here guys we buff up with uh, Margaret right there, it's gonna give us a heal. Freya's gonna do her attack so that we life steal back up to full HP, and then Elizabeth's gonna do her attack right there, which buff strips the boss and actually does heal us and and finish off this phase of the fight. So now we are on phase two, guys. Now phase two is actually gonna be very similar to floor one's phase two, but it's gonna be a little bit different. So every time. 
um we have the exact same setup by the way so damage reduction right final damage decrease these can be removed from stance cancel right just like last time the one thing that we have to mention though is that when you remove a stance uh from this boss when you remove a final damage it's actually going to infect you a red debuff infect so that means you lose recovery related stats so you're not able to lifesteal on that turn so what you want to do if you're ever going to be stance or uh, stance removing so if i do like these two stance removals here with uh, margaret i want to make sure that i follow up with a cleanse card so that i'm not actually you know infected on that attacking turn um the infect is only one turn though so it's only going to be affecting you while you're attacking and after that it's actually going to disappear so it's not the like the worst thing ever it's only really if you have like an elizabeth ultimate and you're trying to heal up that's when it can become an issue right so what, what we're going to do here guys is we're actually going to do the stance removal here with uh, margaret and then we're going to do the stance removal with freya um one more thing to mention as well guys is that on this phase though you can't remove all three because you will get a damage dealt buff when you do remove all three of the debuffs or all three of the uh, stances i mean so you definitely do not want to completely remove all of his stances you only want to remove at the most two and then you can keep one and then just kill him that way um for his skills as well guys he has a uh, pierce a Wii. he does have a stance as well which he does uh, counter he's gonna have disable ultimate move single target and then he's also gonna have lowering defense related stats of the enemy's single target so he's gonna be focusing down my elizabeth because she has the lowest hp of all my characters here so we can see 417 uh 554 uh 475 and then 604 so yeah like elizabeth is going to be the one that gets targeted so what we're going to do here is we're going to do the double stance removal and then follow up with the double mile attacks um you would think to for me to go for like the uh the card with elizabeth right here but because we're actually not going to need to lifesteal this turn um it doesn't matter that we're actually getting infected and so we can just attack freely um so i am going to go for all the attacks right there with uh with freya and uh, margaret and then we do the mile double attack um, and that's going to do a good chunk of damage right there to get him around uh, very, very close to dying. So yeah, guys, we definitely want to move into the next phase as well with as many damaging skills as possible as the next, say, uh, the next phase is going to be very reliant on us dealing damage, right? So before actually moving into the next phase here, we actually want to save a few Freya attack cards and Mael attack cards as well because we're going to need that damage moving into the next phase. So what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to waste the Margaret buff card right there just to heal up uh, Elizabeth right there because she did lose a little bit of HP. We are going to actually do the AoE here with Freya and I'm actually just going to waste these stance removal here because we've already gotten the 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 heal right there and i guess what we could do as well actually um i could do uh this right here and get the defense related up that'll also push up our ultimate too um so i don't think that's a bad idea i think we'll do that and then we'll go for the uh aoe with freya and then we'll do single target now this does remove a lot of our attacking cards but i'm getting ultimates with all my characters here so i think that's going to be good enough when moving into the next phase so we will do that we will buff up right there with elizabeth so we top deck her ultimate because remember every time we use a skill with her we actually push up her ultimate ultimate which is going to be really good we do the single target right there with freya guys and that's actually going to finish off this phase of the fight and we move into the final phase here now this phase of the fight guys of nidog is going to be very difficult um the reason why this phase is super difficult is because you need to do 50 percent of this guy's hp every single turn if you do not have him uh less than 50 percent hp he will get a bunch of attack related stat ups now he does have the gauge again and you can see here that uh this gauge is filled when the demonic beast is 50 percent hp or higher at the start of the turn so we have to make sure that he is less than 50 percent if we want to be removing the gauge and to lower the gauge as it mentions the gauge uh his hp has to be lower than 50 percent at the start of the turn so for us to be able to lower that we have to make sure he is less than 50 percent and that is why i said guys that we want to have a bunch of ultimates going into this phase so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna do the cleanse here with elizabeth i'm gonna do the ultimate with mael i'm gonna do the ultimate with freya and then i'm gonna do the ultimate with uh, margaret and what that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that we put them less than 50 because the damage cap on this phase i think is 35 percent um, so we're going to be, yeah, 35% uh, HP right there. So that's a guarantee putting him less than 50% HP. And that's going to allow us to um, not have an issue with him getting the attack related up. So boom, we do the triple ultimate right there. And the Abyss is actually going to counteract his start of turn healing as well, as you guys can see, because he does have um, a really high regeneration rate and recovery rate. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to actually show his skills as well. So we'll click on his skills uh, on this next turn here. But uh, yeah, I mean, not the skills haven't really changed too much, right? The skills haven't really changed too much. Um, he does have a D rank skill, which he's going to be using every third turn. And then on the second turn, he's going to be using this detonate skill on AOE. So uh, yeah, you definitely want to bear that in mind. He does have cancel stances and cancel buffs on the single target. And then he's going to have AOE live steal right there. So he's going to heal up a lot with explode on his ultimate guys. So that's going to be very important. You can also see as well, guys, that every single turn, he does actually increase his 
HP. So if you look at his uh, his HP here, he actually does increase HP or latest stats by 5% for every turn that goes on. So the longer the turns that go on, the more HP or latest stats he's going to get. Every single turn as well, guys, he's going to actually get a 30% damage reduction effect. So for you to actually deal more damage to him, you would want to actually get some buff removal cards with Elizabeth if possible. You don't necessarily need them though, considering this team is very, very strong in terms of tanking. So you're not going to fully need all of them uh, are really always to be removed. You can actually make sure that there are a few or whatever and, and you'll be completely fine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the Elizabeth ultimate. Or actually, no, what we'll do is we'll do the uh, buff card with Margaret and we'll save this Elizabeth ultimate for when we get another attack card. Because then with uh, with an attacker with Liz, we can actually recycle the ultimate or we could save this for when we need to finish off the fight when his gauge is uh, hit to zero. Um, and as you guys can see, whenever we put him less than 50%, the gauge shreds by 33%. So because we had him less than 50 that last turn, the gauge shred by 33. Next turn, it's going to shred by 33 again. And then 33 uh, down to zero. And then we can actually kill him. Right, so that's kind of the idea. So what we're going to do here is just going to waste these stance cancel cards. We're going to waste these right here. And then we're going to do these single target right there with Freya. And that's going to allow us to pretty much, uh, you know, deal enough to where um, he's going to be at 0% HP. And the Abyss is going to, you know, hit him again and uh, lower that HP again, guys. So boom. There we go. We just start ripping these attack cards right here. And because he has less than 50% HP already, that's going to already lower his gauge no matter what. So even if the Abyss, like, you know, uh, hits him after, he has to be lower than 50 at the start of the turn. So right there, he does actually get a another buff, right? So we're going to uh, be able to remove that with uh, Elizabeth right here. So yeah, he goes to the AoE. Um, that's going to be the non d rank seal. That's going to be the detonate one. He's going to go for the single target buff removal. That's fine. And then he's going to go for the other single target as well. And then right here, guys, he's going to have the uh, d rank one. So that uh, red one right there is going to be the d rank. The last one he just used was the uh, detonate. So yeah, now that we have that out of the way, what we can do is we can actually do the Liz uh, card right there. We can actually do the cleanse card with Elizabeth right here. We can do the buff removal. And then I'm actually going to do the uh aoe with my l because we have a lot of damage here and we because elizabeth actually fills her gauge so easily we can re-get another ultimate with her for that next turn when we're gonna finish the fight so boom 234 um we're gonna get a little bit of uh you know basic stats right there as well we dropped the mile aoe and that's gonna do 500k and now we're in a really good position guys where we can finish off the fight full hp and we're not we're not gonna have too many issues as well um so there we go he's gonna go for the ultimate right there and then, uh, yeah, he's going to switch over to uh, Elizabeth as well. He's going to derank uh, Freya right there because she did actually merge a rank 2 from the from the jump. But that's going to be completely fine. So what we're going to do now here, guys, is we're going to do the cleanse card right here. We're going to drop the ultimate. We're going to do the Freya single target. And I'm actually going to do the Mael single target as well. And that's going to be able to kill this part of the fight, guys, so we can move into the next phase. So that's going to be very, very good. Boom. Full health right there. We get the Elizabeth ultimate just in case. We do the Freya single target. Boom. And then the Mile single target is actually going to finish him off as well, guys. So there is the floor two, um, you know, phase three of the fight. It's a, it, it is a little bit difficult, especially for a lot of you guys with lower box CC. It's going to be a lot harder for you to deal damage there. But as long as you save cards, like if you go into that phase with like, you know, maybe two Mile single targets or you have a Mile ultimate and a Frey ultimate like I did, then you should be in a pretty good position to be able to take out that uh, phase of the fight and not have too many issues, guys. So that's going to be floor two right there, man. Let's move into floor three and let's discuss the mechanics of that. And we'll, we'll go over all of that in. Uh, floor three all right guys we are hopping into floor three of nidhogg here guys this is where everything actually does change for the worse for you because it's going to be a lot difficult on this phase of nidhogg guys so each of the phases here as you guys can see actually have a gauge bar so that's going to be very very important to know what these gauges do and how to actually combat them so if we actually look at this gauge right here guys is the first thing we're going to do fully deplete the gauge to remove the demonic pieces immortality effect the increased effect is going to be the gauges filled at the start of the demonic pieces turn when it uh and it has an attack increase effect so whenever he has an attack increase effect he's going to increase his gauge from zero um another way he actually does it as well is the gauge is filled at the start of every turn in the demonic beast takes so every turn that is started turn for him he's also going to increase the gauge as well for us to be able to lower the gauge we're going to have to uh, inflict damage on the demonic beast during our attacking turn or we're going to have to use pierce damage as well so it's going to be kind of like floor one phase three uh, but we're going to have to do that right now pretty much right so we're going to have to do all these skills right now um if you have red margaret guys you can actually one shot this phase and not have to deal with any of the gimmicks but for this video i will actually show you guys the gimmicks so we can get an idea of what he's capable of even though i was actually i actually am able to one shot him on this turn if i do these four cards right here so if i do these four cards in succession and you have this exact same team you won't actually have to do what these gimmicks are but i just want to explain them for people that have to deal with these uh, mechanics regardless so now actually clicking on to the spore right here for his skills he's gonna have lifesteal on his ultimate he's gonna have a stance as well he's gonna have 
a uh, attack up card, which remember that attack up is actually going to increase the gauge. Right, so when he has an attack increase effect, he's actually going to increase the gauge. Going back to his skills here, guys, um, he does also have a quell attack. So it's going to be when he has a stance, he's going to deal more damage. And then he does also have co-destruction as well. So just bear that in mind. Um, the one thing that's going to be very important, and I'll show you guys as we do this part of the fight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the uh, Freya cards right here. And because I'm not going to go for the kill turn one, actually, I'm just going to waste this card and then waste this card with Elizabeth as well. So what we're going to do here, guys, is I'm going to explain the, the phase and how it actually works as we get to that part. Because the way it works is a little complicated, and I think you guys have to kind of see it in action to kind of know how it works. So right here, we do all those skills right there. And now because it's the start of the Demonic Beast's turn, he's actually going to fill his gauge, and it goes up to 54% right there, guys. So that's going to be a little important right there. So right here, he goes for his attack. Um, he's going to go for another follow-up attack as well. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to be pretty much tanking this very, very well, right? The only way we're really getting cooked here is if we take a little bit too much damage. But what we're going to do here is we're going to buff up with Elizabeth and actually push up Elizabeth's ultimate as well. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this uh, buff card as well. And then I'm actually going to waste uh, this card right here. And I'm going to do the single target with my yell as well. Um, and then I'll show you guys what happens on the next turn. So starting from turn three, we're going to have something that's going to be a little bit important for us to, to have to do when doing this part of the fight. So right here, we do the single target with Margaret. And then we also do the single target with Mael, which is going to shred the gauge. But it's not really going to matter too much because he's going to get back up to full gauge. And uh, we're not going to be able to instantly shred it yet. Um, so yeah, now we're on turn three, guys. This is the very important turn right here. So you guys will see. He does get the attack up, and he does also have a final damage decrease buff. Now, this buff is very important because, as I'll show you guys here, right, uh, when we actually do attack him, let me show you. So, right here, when we actually go onto the character here, he's going to have a final damage decrease 10%. Now, the way you actually remove that final damage decrease is by using any skill in the game. Any skill in the game will remove it, but... What happens is, is that skill gets sealed. So if I use a buff skill, a buff skill will get sealed. It will remove his final damage decrease, but it will get sealed. So a buff skill will get sealed. If I use a debuff attack skill, the debuff attack skills will get sealed. If I use an attack skill, the attack skills will get sealed. So not for a specific character, for your whole team. So what you want to have here is you want to make sure you have at least one buff card or one debuff attack card with Mael or, you know, if you have Elizabeth buff card or, you know, a buff card with Mar uh, Margaret, that's going to be good too because you want to make sure you see that now you cannot seal ultimates though so that's something very important you cannot seal ultimate so the way that we're actually gonna you know get through this phase of the fight here is we're gonna make sure that we get ultimate with uh Mael, freya and uh margaret right there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this card right here we're gonna seal buff cards so we're gonna do elizabeth's card right there we're actually gonna waste the Mael aoe and i'm also gonna do the Mael single target so we top deck Mael's ultimate as he's about to get a stance as well so we're gonna do that Right here, what this is going to do, guys, is going to push up another Elizabeth ultimate so that we can actually ult again and give everyone the ultimate if we didn't have cards with them. But it looks like we'll be able to actually do the ultimate as we do the uh, other ones to be able to remove the gauge and then full heal as well. So boom. So as you guys can see, my buff cards did get sealed right there and it did remove the uh, damage reduction. So that's fine. That's completely good. Right, so right there, we do take a little bit of damage right there. We're going to take a little bit uh, here as well. The AoE does start to do a lot of damage, guys. So just, you know, kind of bear in mind that. Um, right here, as you guys can see, we do get infected as he sets up the stance. So whenever he sets up a stance, you want to have a stance removal. So having a character, like, you know, having a, an attack card with Freya is going to be really good because that's going to build up all stats while being able to remove the stance. So actually, I'm going to do the uh, attack card with Freya right here. We're actually going to waste this card as well. And then I'm actually going to stall the turn here and I'm going to do the attack card with my L. And why, the reason why I have not altered with Elizabeth yet is because I want to save that card for when we actually are uh, about to triple ultimate into the guy to actually uh, finish them off so right there we do these attacks and then we're going to follow up with Mael as well and uh, we're going to be in a very very good position guys for us to move into the next phase and we're going to be pretty much done this phase of the fight so a lot of gimmicks going on guys but once you get into the groove of it and you start you know getting getting the ideas down it'll be a lot easier to uh, to remember how to uh, how to go about it right so again he does have the damage reduction as you guys can see our buff skills are not sealed anymore but they will be sealed again as you know we do our skills right here so what we're going to do though 
um, is we're going to do the triple ultimate. So the triple ultimate here is going to do 33% per ultimate. So we're going to shred the gauge all the way to zero. And Freya's Abyss effect actually will do damage after the zero uh, of the gauge to actually finish off the fight. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do the ultimate with Elizabeth as well to make sure that we finish the phase with full HP as we move into the next phase so that we don't have any issues with, you know, anyone being less HP than the other. Because we want to make sure Elizabeth is always at, you know, the lowest amount of HP no matter what so that she gets targeted over other characters. So boom, the Abyss hits. Regardless of the dupe level that you have, the Abyss will always kill because he's only going to have one HP. So even if you have one six Freya, this is going to be fine. If you're in a situation like that and you don't have an Elizabeth character, you'll have to just follow up attack uh, with another character. So I'd have to just attack with like Mael or I'd attack again with Freya. Regardless, you would just attack. Right, so that's kind of the way you go about it. Now, floor two, phase two, guys. This is going to be very, very uh, important. So he has the gauge again. Now, if you actually go to how he increases the gauge, the gauge is filled when final damage decrease is removed. So whenever we remove a stance, he's going to increase the gauge. Now, the way we actually decrease the gauge is uh, depleted according to the random condition. And the way we actually apply random conditions is by removing a damage reduction. So whenever we remove one of these, we get a condition, but it's also going to increase his gauge as well so as an example here just to show you guys what it what happens is we would do this right here with uh with margaret to actually remove a damage reduction and so that when we do that we're actually going to get a buff that benefits us it's going to be a condition that you know makes it worse for him but he's also going to increase his gauge so it's kind of a win-lose at the exact same time so what we're going to do right here though is um because he has damage dealt whenever he's at the zero percent on the gauge he will have this damage dealt buff and that's going to be i think it's a 30 percent damage dealt right so that's going to be uh definitely something you want or oh, 50 percent wow even more so definitely something you don't want him to have so always whenever this starter turn hits you want to have a stance removal now another gimmick there's a lot of gimmicks going on but another gimmick is that for every character that doesn't attack they will be applied with a darkness stack and if we actually go to the character's kit um we can actually see that he does have covert action 50 percent damage dealt per darkness on the target so pretty much what you're trying to do here is that you have to attack with every single character at least once that is going to be the idea if you don't don't attack with every character once one of them will get a uh, darkness effect and then if the if the boss actually targets that character they will die the darkness will make it so that they take so much damage to the point where you know if you start to rack up like two or three darkness on a character that's getting targeted it's going to be really bad now you want to make sure that elizabeth is not a character that gets darkness because she's the one getting targeted because she has tarmiel link she'll be the lowest hp and will be attacked so what we're going to do here is we're going to do an attack with Liz. We're going to do an attack with uh, Mael right there. And then we're going to do just another Mael AoE because we don't have any Freya cards. So because we don't have any Freya cards, unfortunately, we are going to have a darkness stack on her. But she shouldn't get targeted regardless. Now, right there, guys, we did increase the gauge. And as you can see, uh, he did actually get a recovery condition. Now, I'll show you guys exactly what each condition does as we collect them. But uh, as you start getting uh, more conditions, it's going to be a lot worse for him, right? Because they're going to buff us up. Right, so I'll show you guys here. So boom, he's gonna attack into Elizabeth. He's gonna just start start spamming attacks into her. And because he's attacking into her, you definitely do not want to have any darkness stacks because he'll take a lot more damage, right? Um, so there we go. Boom, we do get targeted right there. Now, if we actually go on to his kid again, he does also have a stance, guys, that does life steal. So you don't want him to stance up and attack because if he uh, attacks off the stance, he's gonna heal a lot. So that's gonna be very important. Now, uh, for the buff that he got right there, if you actually check it, it's going to be the gauge is depleted when using recovery skills. So now whenever we use an Elizabeth ultimate, we're actually going to shred the gauge by 5%, 5 or 6%. I think it depends on uh, on the actual skill effect. Um, so there we go. And then the rest of the uh, conditions you can get is going to be buff skills, is going to be ultimates, is going to be stand skills. So just things like that are going to be able to reduce his gauge. So the more conditions you get, the more easier it is. And uh, as we, you know, remove the stance, it's going to increase his gauge, but it's going to keep giving us the those conditions to be a lot easier overall throughout the fight but again you don't want to spam uh, cancel stance because if i start using like you know this cancel stance with margaret now and i start spamming a bunch of cancel stances just to collect conditions it's going to be a little bit bad on us because what's going to happen is he's going to have such high of a gauge that it's going to take us forever to actually shred the gauge anyway so you don't want to completely remove it as fast as possible you want to kind of take your time through it so what we're going to do here guys is we're going to do the uh we'll do well okay so yeah what we'll, what we'll do is we'll do the attack card with liz we're going to do the attack Attack over Freya so she doesn't get a darkness stack. We're gonna do AoE with uh with Mael, and then we're gonna do the buff card with Margaret so she doesn't get a darkness stack. So we are attacking with everyone here, so we should not get a darkness stack as we do all of these attacks right here. So boom. 
do the AoE with Freya. We're going to do the uh, AoE with Mael right there. And then we're going to do the uh, buff card with Margaret. And so what's going to happen here is it's going to lower the gauge every every little bit. You know, we're lowering it as well. And it's now at 3%. But he still has those three damage reductions. And he has the recovery effect. So that's going to stay. That recovery effect is going to stay now throughout, throughout the entire, uh, entire rest of the fight. At least for this phase. Right? So there we go. Alright guys, so we are tanking very, very well. He is going to set up the stance right there. And as he sets up the stance, he actually does gain back another damage reduction. So now what we want to do is we actually want to ult right here to remove the stance uh, using Mael. And then we can actually do the Elizabeth ultimate right here. Um, we can do the Elizabeth follow-up attack. And then I'm actually going to do the Margaret buff card here. Even though we aren't attacking with uh, Freya right there, we should be okay. Um, or you know, you know what I'm actually going to do actually? I'm not going to ult with Mael actually oh no 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 with margaret with margaret because i want to actually save this because his ultimate if you guys that don't know is actually going to be extort so we definitely want to save a cleanse card so that we can remove the extort or we have a buff removal card with elizabeth to be able to remove it as well which we do have attack cards with elizabeth as well so what we'll do though is we'll do this um we'll do the uh elizabeth ultimate i would say we're gonna do the buff card now um, because actually we do have uh, removal with Elizabeth anyway, so I think that's fine. And then we're just going to waste my all single target. So that's going to get us through everyone except Freya. So Freya is the only one who has an attack. So we're going to get another buff here. Let's see. Uh, we do get the, I think that's the ultimate one. So whenever we use, we use ultimates, we actually shred the gauge. Okay. So there we go. We do the Margaret buff right there just to get some damage reduction. We do the mile single target and that's going to do a good chunk of damage as well. But remember, we have to make sure the gauge is zero as we get the kill. So now we have two darkness stats on Freya right there. Let's see. He attacks in the Freya on the first hit, but it's not going to always target Freya. He's going to switch over to Elizabeth and actually target her from now on. So as you guys will see, boom, switches over to Elizabeth because she is the lowest HP. So sometimes he'll just randomly attack, you know, at the beginning like that. That's fine. But bear that in mind. That's why I'm saying you don't want to get darkness stats as much as possible. You definitely don't want to get them if they happen they happen you know you can't really do anything about it but if you know if you can not get the darkness stats then it's going to be a lot better so right here uh the gauge is depleted when using ultimate moves so now that we have that condition we can actually shred the gauge to zero and actually get the kill and move on so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to buff up with margaret to make sure we full heal i'm actually going to go for the ultimate with freya i'm going to do the ultimate with margaret and then we can actually do the elizabeth attack card right here to get ultimate with her as we finish the phase because he's going to be at zero uh zero the gauge because we're using this buff card and then double ultimate ultimate which is going to shred the gauge by five percent each so we do that that's two we do the ultimate with freya boom uh it's going to shred it to two we do the margaret one it actually goes to zero and now we can actually get the kill guys so depending on the conditions you get uh depending on it uh like you'll either get the buff one or the ultimate one whichever one you get that's going to be how you actually reduce the gauge and then eventually get into the phase three right here now for phase three guys this is going to be very important as well we got a lot of things going on in phase three there's a lot of buffs that the boss has and then the gauge again as well so let's go back to the gauge and let's explain the gauge so the remove immortality fully deplete the gauge to remove the demonic pieces immortality effect the gauge is filled if the demonic pieces hp is at above a certain threshold depending on the threshold of hp that the uh nidhogg is at he will actually lower his gauge depending on his uh threshold now if he's above a certain amount of hp right here which uh which i mentioned right there if he's above a certain amount of hp he actually will increase it so for the decrease he has to be um depleted based on diminished hp for the demonic beast all right guys so post editing amazing here i want to just mention one thing that i forgot to mention in the actual recording but the amount of hp that the boss needs to have for him to actually increase the gauge is going to be uh at a 90 percent or higher if he has 90 percent hp guys he's going to increase the gauge so you have to make sure that it's always going to be less than 90 percent in the video i explained how you want to have it less than 30 so that you shred it faster but as long as it's less than 90 you're going to be completely okay just make sure that you have them less than 90 every single turn if you're going to be going through the fight a little bit slower than like i do in the video so as we attack into him right here guys we want to make sure that he is less than 30 percent on the hp you don't have to make sure he's less than 30 percent it just helps a lot because of the the way the turns work and how many turns you can stall on this phase um for you guys that don't know these buffs that he has right here so when we actually click onto him and go on these buffs these suppress the demonic beast itself and these are going to be what uh hinders him from getting all stats but he will get all stats once all these demonic beast purification buffs are disappearing and they disappear one every single turn no matter what so every single turn he's going to lose one of these demonic beast purifications and so when he loses all five of them he's going to gain all stats which is why i'm saying that we want to be putting him less than 30 percent because when we put him less than 30 percent it shreds the gauge by 25 percent per turn which would mean that he would still have one as we're on the final turn 
for his skills here guys he's gonna have ignite on his ultimate so you definitely want to have a cleanse whenever he has his ultimate ready he's gonna have reflect which is gonna reflect damage taken when he has the stance up so you definitely want to have a stance removal whenever he has this he is also going to deplete uh you know skill ranks as well and then uh, it's also going to take ultimate move gauge when he do, uh you know uh decreases the skill rank he's gonna also have the poison aoe guys and then he's gonna have the bleed single target so now that we know exactly what we want to be doing on this phase let's start attacking now there's no damage cap so you actually can put him less than 30 percent with like one skill and because we have my here at six to the six or even like you know even with like a lower dude my i think this is still possible but regardless we're gonna all win my L right here and it's gonna put him less than 30 percent guaranteed what we'll do is we'll just start wasting all of our cards here um i'm gonna do you know what i'll do actually i'll do the mile ultimate i'm gonna do the elizabeth ultimate as well i'm gonna do the uh defense related up so that we get her ultimate again and then i'm actually just gonna waste the uh, margaret uh, uh single target card right there and boom we're actually gonna put him less than uh you know less than 30 percent guaranteed as you guys can see it, that was four million damage right there my mail you know at this point in the fight guys it gets very very easy so this phase is honestly the easiest phase of the fight um once you actually get to it because it's so easy to damage him that you can really just shred the gauge every single turn right it's gonna be a lot easier to do that so right there we are actually patiencing because we have the damage reduction from miles ultimate um regardless though if you weren't patiencing we would be taking a little bit of damage there and that's fine right we can uh, obviously heal that up and cleanse it so we're not we're not uh you know completely screwed um what we'll do here is we'll do the ultimate with elizabeth i'm gonna do the cleanse right there i'm gonna do the single target with mael and then i'm actually gonna waste the uh single target with freya right there and that should actually put him less than 30 percent because we have the attack related stats up and you know mael is gonna be hitting super hard guys with how strong you know you actually get throughout the fight so boom right here Look at that, man. Miles is going to put him less than 30% guaranteed. And even Freya, too, if I had to follow up regardless, is going to be 1.3 million. And that's actually going to lower his HP again as well. And as you guys can see, every single turn, he is losing one of those stacks. So right there, that card right there, guys, is going to be the D-rank. Because we had no cards to be D-ranked, we didn't lose any ultimate move gauge. That's really good. Um, and so now we actually have our ultimates again where we can do the exact same thing. And that's why Elizabeth is so strong in this fight because she's able to cycle ultimates very, very quickly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do the Elizabeth attack card to make sure we get her ultimate ultimate we're gonna do the mael ultimate we're gonna do the freya ultimate and i'm also gonna rip the uh ultimate right here with margaret as well we do have a cancel stance next turn with uh freya so that's gonna be really good for us to remove the uh stance as he puts it up so we're gonna do six million with mael and then uh, uh, freya right there is gonna do five million and then boom right and, like no matter what here guys you're always gonna make sure that he's less than 30 percent. so boom the abyss actually did enough damage to put him back to zero again right uh we do get ignited here and uh, yeah, I mean, the boss is not going to be doing any damage at all. And I mentioned earlier in the video, you don't need to have the 6 out of 6 mile to be able to do this. I think this is definitely still doable with a 1 out of 6 mile. And if you guys have seen my free-to-play account, I've done many clears on my free-to-play account with lower dupes on, on the account to be able to do it. But right here, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, ult with Elizabeth. We're going to do the cleanse card right there just to remove all the uh, stuff, which will also get us back her ultimate. I'm going to do the cancel stance and then the mile single target as we normally would to, you know, shred the gauge, let's say, if he didn't have uh zero percent hp anyway right we would normally just attack regardless so we're gonna stance remove right there and then we're gonna do the single target with Mael. and as we uh get him to zero on the gauge right here guys he's gonna have only one of these things left and uh, he actually is at zero percent hp right now pretty much so we only have to tap him once and he's gonna die right here so this is how uh, easy this fight can become when you have the max setup uh, for the fight. Um, you know, for a lot of you guys attempting this, you probably won't be able to do like, you know, full HP with an Abyss bar, but it'll still do a lot depending on your dupes of Freya. And even if you don't have super high dupes, you're fine regardless. So right here, guys, if I wasn't able to kill this turn and he still had gauge, the moment he loses this, he would get 30% all stats. So that's something you want to bear in mind. But because we're in a position where we can easily just kill, I'm going to do the attack card right there and we're done, guys. And that is Nidhogg, all the floors right there explained for you guys not too bad uh, especially this part of the fight i think everything else is a lot more complicated but once you understand how to go about the fight it's a really easy fight guys especially with this final part being you know a, pretty much a pushover especially with the team i'm using right so uh there we go man that is going to be the nidhogg demonic beast battle guide guys updated with lr elizabeth let me know what you guys think in the comment section below man was this video helpful this is the final demonic beast guide in the series guys so if you want to see any other demonic beast guide uh videos i've already done uh each of the other three so i've done bird deer skull and hottie and now nidhogg so now all you guys should be able to be clearing the demonic beast battles regardless of the one you're doing and so i definitely hope this was helpful man like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video man and with that out of the way, guys, I'm going to see you guys on the next one, man. Peace out, and have a great rest of your day, guys. See you later, man.